Cool. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of TA Brews. I'm Ponto, and I'm with Mark today. There he is, that English bastard, you. It's good to see you, Mark. How you doing? You Canadian. Ah, uh, I've got nothing. <laughs> so how are you uh, doing? I'm good. Yeah, how are you? Good. You have a beer in hand? I do, yeah. Do you? You have your bottle opener? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and for a first, I've got a proper, proper glass. Uh, I guess good. Thanks, the Central City and The Hobbit. Very good. I'm sporting a well similar shape of glass. I've got my Spiegelau, um, yeah, Hulip stemmed on a goblet. Mine should arrive any day now. I've ordered uh, seven different styles to fully enhance all of my beers. Very good. Good, yeah. yes. Um, what are you drinking today? What do you got? I, I have an, uh, an Elik Drift, which is by a brewer. Uh, well, essentially, they're a northeast English brewer called Mordew. But this is their experimental project called the Panda Project. So if you look at their Mordew uh, website, they're very much a traditional uh, real ale British brewery. Uh, this is a little bit more in the kind of new world sense of experimentation. So be interesting to see what it's like. It's a it's a new world golden ale, apparently, at five point, uh, well, 5% ABV. Uh, yeah, and I'm expecting something a little bit along the world of, um, on the way along the line of American pale ale kind of hoppiness. Um, Have so, you already been drinking? I haven't. It's just quite late here. Okay. So. <laughs> Forgive um, my goodness. That, cool. that actually looks like it'd be it'd be Spanish. It looks like a Cinco de Mayo type thing on the on the label there. Yeah, it does have that kind of um, almost like Mexican Day of the Dead almost type. Uh, yeah, the macabre well, sort of it? feel to it. Yeah, yeah, it's a cool looking bottle. I I yeah. like the design. It's, um, yeah, it's interesting. Cool. Well, um, anyway, what what have you got this week? Uh, I've got one from Phelps, which is a local brewery in Victoria. It's a Unicorn White IPA. Very and nice. Very similar to yours. It's sort of a mythical or not a very common label. Yeah. It's a unicorn riding through galaxies. I like it. Cool. Which is, it's, it's quite nice. I like it. Yeah. Uh, I've said many times the mythical creatures make the beer, and I hope this is no exception to that rule. If, who doesn't uh, like mythical creatures on their beer? Absolutely. I know. I mean, eventually they start seeing them if you drink enough of it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, We've all been there. Yes, more often than we like to admit sometimes. Uh, <laughs> awesome. You want to crack yours open and have a go at it? Yeah, my uh, drawing first blood this week. Yeah. Uh, good, good, good. So let's crack open the Allelic Drift Panda Project. Hopefully it doesn't make me a sad panda. <laughs> yes, that wouldn't be a good thing, would it? All right, so going for the pour. Cool. Immediately, it's got the kind of orangey amber hue to it with a nice frothy head. Rather attractive beer. Let's see if you can get an idea with the light there. Good carbonation to it. Uh, ever so slightly. Yeah, it looks like it's bottle conditioned. It looks fairly unfiltered. Um, slight cloud to it from that, but still relatively see through given the um, bottle conditioning or unfiltered nature of the beer. Let's go for the aroma. Yeah, straight away it's um, American hops. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know the exact varieties in there, but it is very, very citrusy up front, very grapefruity, tropical kind of aromas coming out of there. Possibly something um, along the lines of sort of either Cascade or Chinook type American hops. Hmm. Yeah, lemony with kind of citrus kind of uh, notes in there as well. Some pininess, definitely some pininess as well. I find that quite often with a lot of American style hops, you get that bit of pine in there. It's just like a very subtle sort of thing. Yeah, you get bags of that, particularly if there's any dry hopping uh, going in there. So when they kind of add um, hops to the fermentation or um, or into the final vessel. Mm. Mm. yeah lovely kind of um initial kind of sweetness but it is very very citrusy kind of straight into the flavor as well we've got uh, a little bit of kind of almost orange marmalade that kind of develops as well with a slight bitterness and 
Uh, you get all that lovely kind of zesty tropical flavors, you know, that pineiness, that kind of um, citrus, that grapefruit and everything. And it carries through to what does to me seem like kind of an orange, um, orange marmalade kind of bitterness as well. And it's nice and lingering. It's got a kind of quite a smooth, quite, uh, silky mouth feel as well it's uh, really quite pleasant carbonation is not too strong either so you know really really rather nice yeah it looked like it would have been a bit strong based on on your glass there because i had some clink some bubbles cling to the bottom and you could see it quite mm. quite vigorously it must have been just a temporary thing when it was first out of the bottle yeah it's settled yeah. a bit that that's more kind of normal now i would say um mm. but yeah there's there's definitely some kind of floral notes in there as well it's really quite a nice complex um hopper Hop uh, profile actually. What do you think you'd uh, you'd put it with? Mm. You know, food wise and all that. Um, maybe something spicy. Maybe Indian Indian food or something like that. I quite like hoppy beers with uh, Indian food. I find the the kind of citrusness kind of cuts through some of that grease uh, in the in the food and also kind of complements all of the spices as well. Uh, and find that that's quite a good match. But um, yeah, mm. off the top of my head, that's that's what I would do. Awesome. Mm. Would you Would you drink it again? Oh, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd definitely go for it again. I mean, it's um, definitely some some slight graininess there in the, the mouthfeel. You know, some people might not find that to be their thing. Um, mm. But, you know, I, I, I find that just adds to the authenticity of the beer for me. I, I you know, I don't mind a little bit of a um, little bit of grain, a little bit of grit in my beers. It just shows, you know, it just shows that it's not filtered and it's kind of real, kind of adds to that thickness, the complexity of it as well. So, you know, I, I, I like that. Some people might not like that in their beers, but um Certainly not me. So, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd go for it again. It's nothing outstanding. You know, it's fairly typical of what you'd expect from an American pale ale, perhaps. Uh, it's maybe not on the hop assertiveness of uh, of, of the IPA style, uh, but it's present, quite well balanced. You know, you've got a nice little malt sweetness there, but balanced out by the citrus, great fruity hops. It's a good, well-rounded uh, American pale ale style, I'd, I'd say. And they're calling it a new world gold nail. Um, the phrase gold nail is very typical in, in, in Britain for sort of paler, um, you know, brighter beers, uh, but ultimately with all those kind of American hops in there, I, I classify it more in the American pale ale category personally. But you know, what's in a name at the end of the day? But it's not quite IPA though. But um, yeah, it's pleasant, hmm, all very drinkable, sessionable, sessionable, eh? Yeah, that's that's a good term. That's not actually <laughs> not used too often over here. <laughs> but as we discussed one of the other times, session session IPAs are becoming and session ales are becoming more popular. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I mean, I tried one the other week that was that Beaver Town one. I think I mentioned that's um, you know around four four uh, percent called the, like an all day IPA kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. cool. Do you want to crack yours open? Yeah, let's go into mine now. This one's a white IPA. I've never had a white IPA before, but I'm expecting it's going to be mm. basically a white ale with a lot of hops in it. So. Yeah, should have the, the smoothness to it, not what you're used to. Uh, with the huge, huge amounts of bitterness in the, the regular IPAs. Mm. All right. Go for this. It's not something I've tried before either. Um, like a well hopped um, wheat beer style. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how you know IPA just seems to be more and more of a broad term for very hoppy these days, as as we've discussed before. Now it's it's got quite the haze to it actually. If you can see that, yeah, um, it's actually it looks very orange um, from from the camera that you're seeing, but it's actually quite a pale, um, like a like a dull goldish or, or like a a lemon sort of yellow to it. Mm -hmm. Quite different. I've never seen something quite that color before. It's got a bit of a green tinge to it, even actually. It's a bit odd, but yeah, yeah, cool. The smell it smells very IPA ish actually. Okay. So it's got that that grapefruity and tangerine sort of sort of smell. It's a slight bit of herb as well, so I'm wondering if there might be some uh, some European hops in there as well. It's a bit okay. of that, that earthy sort of smell to it. Hmm. Yeah. Smells very good. It's actually quite carbonated, just mm. typical in in uh, North America. When I think uh, about, sorry to interrupt you, but when I yeah. think about wheat beers, you get those kind of spicy clove, almost banana type elements in there. Is there any of that in there, or? Well, there, there's a bit of the herb smell, but nothing, nothing quite like banana or or in that regard. Okay. I mean, there's a slight bit of hops. Um, I'd, I'd say maybe not banana, but there's some mango. Okay. Perhaps. Yeah. Cool. 
Yeah. It's, it's not bad, though. Uh, yeah, or it's actually quite balanced. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of what I was expecting because the, the wheat beers tend to be a little more, you know, malty, of course, with, with mm -hmm. the wheat and everything. Um, and it's got it's got just just enough of the bitterness to not make you, um, you know, you drink a really bitter IPA and your mouth kind of puckers a bit, starts watering. Mm -hmm. I don't get any of that with this one, but I can definitely taste the hops in there, which is nice. Okay. Mouthfeel wise, it's actually it's quite light. It's got um, it, it coats your mouth for for a, a brief second, and that kind of just goes away. It's it's quite dry actually. Um, right. The the aftertaste is a bit of um, is a bit of wheat, a bit of malt, but um, that's to be expected. The wheat beer, it's actually quite quite nice. Never had a white white IPA, and I'm I'm actually glad I've tried one today. Yeah, no, that sounds nice. good. sounds pleasant. Sounds surprisingly balanced for. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, because they're calling it an IPA. Yeah. I mean, the style of an IPA, I wouldn't quite classify it as one, but um, it's definitely more of a, a hoppy wheat beer, mm. which is nice. I find most wheat beers they're a bit too. Um, too malty for my flavor and a bit too too much of the wheat flavor gets through yeah so it's nice to have that that sort of balance on it well, pre predominantly wheat i guess and you get much more of a sweet kind of yeah sensation yeah and that, the aftertaste it leaves i don't know what yeah. what most people like in that regard but it's it's just it's too much of an aftertaste for me in that yeah. department i like like the bitter flavors and stuff right uh, it could from, be a long time to to kind of really warm to wheat beers generally myself i mean when i first the first i remember the first time i tried one I absolutely hated it. I, I I really I couldn't I couldn't actually finish it. I mean, this was a long time ago, right? But um, uh, yeah, the first one I tried, I couldn't like it. It took me a few years to try one again, and then when I did, they've grown on me. But because I really like hops, similar to you, because I really yeah. like the hop um, side of things, um, it, it's something that I like occasionally. I think, but it's not my go-to kind of beer style. You know, that that kind of wheat dominant, um, you know, sort of banana and clove and spice type stuff is is nice. Um, but I, I I do miss the hops, so maybe it sounds like this would be. It's a nice in between, yeah. is, is what I'm getting. Yeah, I mean this this would be a nice nice one too. It's, it's a bit high, like an IPA and alcohol to six and a half percent, so mm. not, it's not quite sessionable by any stretch. But you, know, you could have a few, and it it'd be just fine. Yeah, yeah. Th this one I could drink a little more than a regular wheat beer. Like a wheat beer, I can usually do two tops, and then yeah. I kind of just yeah. But this one I could I could do like an IPA pretty much all night. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's quite nice. I mean, obviously, going over to Germany and stuff um, over here just on a couple of business trips or so is uh, is when I've had sort of proper German wheat beers uh, before, and, and I guess that's what really turned me back on to the style was actually trying German wheat beer over there, which, albeit not you know immensely different and exciting, uh, you get a really good example of the of the of the style over there and um but yeah not not much in the way of uh, hops obviously but you know that's that's just the style that's that's the way it was kind of the way it is so mm -hmm. yeah but that sounds really interesting i mean i have to dig one out maybe myself and um uh, i heard about one from there's a brewery uh, up and coming here at the moment called uh, cloud water brewing and i think they make um like a uh what they're calling a, a hopper bison, hopper hopper bison, which obviously isn't a real style; it's a bastardized yeah. version of it. So it's kind of like like a hoppy heifer bison. Yeah, that, that's essentially what yeah. they're saying it is. So if I can get hold of that, I'll I'll you know I'll bring it to the the show maybe in a in a in a week or so if I can get hold of it. But um, I'll uh, yeah I'll take a take a dig around. Wow, interesting. That's pretty interesting. I'd like your thoughts on that one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, well, cool. Oh, Ponte. Hello. Bit of a technical you. difficulty there. <laughs> yeah, I think we lost you there for a second. Oh, my. Well, it must uh, be the beer. Well, um, anyway. Anyway. Let's wrap this show up. So, yeah. here's the beer. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. To both drinkable, if not massively exciting beers, but interesting nonetheless. Indeed. Sessionable, well, generally sessionable, sort of, and uh, yeah, and mythical the... creatures and macabre, exactly. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's let's leave it on that. So, thanks very much to um, everyone for watching. Um, we are Transatlantic Brews. If you haven't headed over to our website, it's transatlanticbrews.com. If you head over there, we've got a little treat for any of our first time viewers. You can download our Beer Geek Toolkit by subscribing. So, head over to Transatlantic Brews and go grab your free Beer Geek Toolkit, and uh, we'll see you in the next um, either live on Blab 
at uh, blab.im forward slash transatlantic brews or TA brews or over at uh, YouTube if you're watching this retrospectively. And we hope to see you. Um, we're moving the show to Sunday, aren't we? Sunday. Conte? Sorry, you're you're stuttering a bit there. Am I? In your video. Yeah, your video is a little bit. funny as well. Anyway. Oh, must be Blab. Sunday. Who knows? We'll figure Cheers. it out. <laughs> the Sunday beer. There you go. Okay.